Welcome back, my dear students. So till now we were discussing on the lean state of collapse, flexor, and shear, and today we are going to start the new lean state of collapse that is torsion. So till now we have studied what happens when you are uh, experiencing flexor or shear in a reinforced concrete structure. So now you will see what happens if the torsion comes into play in a reinforced concrete structure. Suppose you are having a beam column arrangement like this this is your primary beam primary beam that is the beam which is connected to the primary beam which is connected to the uh, column and this is called as the secondary beam secondary beam this is the column so this is called a secondary beam because this beam rests on another beam so such beams are called as secondary beam so if you see here this primary beam this primary beam you can see is taking the load from the secondary beam that is the slab will be over here slab will be over this beam and the load from this slab will be transferred to this beam and through this beam it will be transferred to the this will be transferred to the secondary beam so what i can see is this secondary beam will be producing a moment on the primary beam and this will deflect or this will have a twisting moment like this that is this primary beam will be having a twisting moment like this and we need to we need to design we need to design the reinforcement for taking that twisting or the that torsion which is taking place in the primary beam so we need to design the reinforcement required for resisting this rotation or this twisting due to due to this secondary beams so i could say i could generalize it that all edge beams all edge beams will be taking torsion or all edge beams which should be designed for a torsional moment because see here this primary beam there will be a slab over here there will be a slab over here and the load will be distributed or the load will be much over here and there is no load over here at this point there is no load only the load is present here so there will be a twisting moment which is occurring in this direction for this beam that is this is also an edge beam this is an edge beam this edge beam will be having twisting or torsional moment due to the unbalancing force the here there is no force here there is no force but here there is force so as a result there will be a torsion experienced by this beam so we are going to see uh, the design for this torsion now some of the other elements which experiencing torsion are that is i could say all edge beams are subjected to torsion now suppose i am having i am having a beam like this and a cantilever slab the weight of the slab will be somewhere acting like this and this is the center of the beam is making an eccentricity e then there will be a twisting moment t is equal to w into e that is a twisting moment will be acting like this so this beam has to be designed this beam has to be designed to take the twisting moment that is t is equal to w e so we need to design this beam for torsional moment now all curved beams all curved beams are also suppose i am having a beam arrangement like this this beam which is curved in shape or curved in plan is subjected to torsion that is all curved beams are subjected to torsion so whichever elements are subjected to torsion we need to design it for resisting that torsional moment also now the code suggests certain guidelines for design of torsion so i will explain it one by one so if you take clause number 41.4 of page number 75 in is 456 2000 you could see the reinforcement the reinforcement in members subjected to torsion the reinforcement for torsion when required shall consist of longitudinal and transverse reinforcement which means it should have a longitudinal reinforcement to resist the tension or if it is in the compression side to resist the compression and transverse reinforcement that is to resist the shear so it should it must have both longitudinal and transverse reinforcement now coming to detail of the longitudinal reinforcement so longitudinal reinforcement it the longitudinal reinforcement shall be designed to resist an equivalent bending moment me1 given by uh, 
एम ई वन इज इक्वल टू एम यू प्लस एम वन वे एम यू इज द बेंडिंग मोमेंट एट द क्रॉस सेक्शन दैट इज योर फैक्टर और अल्टीमेट बेंडिंग मोमेंट नाउ एम वन दैट इज ए न्यू टर्म टू दैट इज एम वन इज इक्वल टू टी यू इन डू वन प्लस डी बाई बी डिवाइड बाई वन पॉइंट सेवन वे टी यू इज द फैक्टर टॉर्शनल मोमेंट एक्टिंग ऑन द बीम डी इज द ओवरऑल डेप्थ ऑफ द बीम एंड बी इज द ब्रेथ ऑफ द बीम विच मीन्स द बेंडिंग मोमेंट यू आर ऑप्टेनिंग यू नीड टू कन्वर्ट इट टू सम अनदर इक्वल एंड बेंडिंग मोमेंट वेन देर इज टॉर्शन बींग एक्सपीरियंस बाई द बीम सो यू नीड टू कन्वर्ट इट टू एन इक्वल एंड बेंडिंग मोमेंट वेर इक्वल एंड बेंडिंग मोमेंट इज द फैक्टर बेंडिंग मोमेंट प्लस सम अनदर वैल्यू एम वन वेर एम वन इज गिवेन बाय दिस इक्वेशन नाउ देर इज वन कंडीशन फॉर दिस डिजाइन फॉर लॉजिटल रेनफोर्समेंट If the numerical value of m1 as defined in 41.4.2 exceeds the numerical value of the moment mu, the longitudinal reinforcement shall be provided on the flexural compression side. That is, if I write here, suppose, suppose I am having a moment m e1 is equal to एम यू प्लस एम वन वी नीड टू डिजाइन इट फॉर एनी वे वी नीड टू डिजाइन फॉर दिस मोमेंट इन सर्टन केसेस वेर एम ई वन इन सर्टन केसेस वेर दिस एम वन वैल्यू इज एम वन वैल्यू इज ग्रेटर देन एम यू इन सर्टन केसेस दैट इज एम वन वैल्यू यूल गेट इट फ्रॉम हियर इज ग्रेटर देन एम यू we need to design it for another moment m e2 we need to design it for another moment m e2 that is m e2 is equal to m1 minus m u and that has to be provided as flexural to take the flexural at the compression phase it's not the compression reinforcement we need to provide the reinforcement as longitudinal reinforcement at the compression phase that is this value for m e2 has to be given in the compression phase and that value for me2 is only given when the ca calculated moment value m1 is this m1 is greater than the factored bending moment that is mu anyway at any case we need to design it for me1 but when there is a case when m1 greater than mu we need to design it for me2 also so that is the case for longitudinal reinforcement and it will be more clear when you are doing a numerical and when coming to the transfer so shear reinforcement Two leg closed hoops enclosing the corner longitudinal bars shall have an area of cross section A S V given by A S V is equal to T U S V divided by B one into D one or the whole into point eight seven F Y plus B U S V divided by two point five D one into point eight seven F Y where T U is the factored torsional moment V U is the factored shear force B one D one there is a new term that you will come to see or be Uh, when you are doing the numerical where b1 is the center to center distance between the corner bars in the direction of the width that is if you are having a beam like this and you and your stirrups and your stirrups are like this you have your reinforcement placed like this you have your reinforcement in this direction so b1 means b1 means the distance between the center to center of the corner reinforcement and d1 means along the depth the center to center distance between the corner reinforcement along the depth so d1 center to center distance between along the corner bars along the depth and this is along the width and b fy to ve are the equivalent b is the breadth of the Remember, F Y is the character strength. Tau V is the equivalent shear stress. That is the shear stress corresponding to your equivalent V U E. You will get you will get this value for V U E over here. That is the equivalent shear, forty one point three shear and torsion. When there is a torsion acting on the body, similar to equivalent bending moment, there is equivalent shear force also. Where equivalent shear force V E shall be calculated from the formula. V is equal to V U plus one point six T U by B, and from here you will get 
tau VE that is equivalent shear stress is equal to VE by BD. And in no case this total transverse reinforcement shall be less than tau VE minus tau E into BSV divided by 0.87 FY. And here this thing what is explained here is equivalent to what we have studied for the design for shear. So we will discuss or we will come closer view of these things when we are dealing with the numerical. Now, now if you take page number 48 of your IS456 to 2000, close number 26.5.1.7, you could see distribution of torsion, torsion reinforcement. When a member is designed for torsion, okay, so in clause number 41, the torsional reinforcement shall be provided as below. The transverse reinforcement for the torsion shall be a rectangular closed stirrup placed perpendicular to the axis of the member. The spacing of the stirrup shall not exceed the least of x1 or x1 plus y1 by 4 and 300 mm whichever is lesser where x1 and y1 are respectively the shorter and longer dimension of the stirrup that is the distance between the center of the stirrup in the x direction that is your width direction and in the y direction that is your depth direction. Now this is very important. The second one, the longitudinal reinforcement shall be placed as close as in practi practicable to the corners of the cross section and in all cases there shall be at least one longitudinal bar in each corner of the ties. That's what we are following. When the cross sectional dimension of the member exceeds 450 mm, very be clear when the cross sectional dimension of the member exceeds 450 mm, additional longitudinal bars shall be provided to satisfy the requirements of the minimum reinforcement and spacing in 26.5.1.3. That is, when the depth of the beam exceeds 450 mm and when it is subjected to torsion, we should provide additional longitudinal bars and this additional longitudinal bars should be provided longitudinally and these bars are called as side phase reinforcement. These bars are called as side phase reinforcement. There is a requirement of the minimum reinforcement and spacing given in 26.5.1.3. If you go to 26.5.1.3, you could see the side phase reinforcement. When the depth of the beam is exceeds 750 mm, side phase reinforcement shall be provided along the two phases. The total area of the side phase reinforcement, such reinforcement shall not be less than 0.1% of the web area and shall be distributed equally on two phases at a spacing not exceeding 300 mm or the web thickness which is less. That is, for a normal beam, if the beam depth exceeds 750 mm, we need to provide side phase reinforcement and the area of side phase reinforcement is 0.1% of the web area. That is, 0.1, that is 0.1 by 100 into width into total depth that is the web area this is the web area total depth b into capital d is the web area or web thickness whichever is less the spacing should be the spacing should be 300 mm or web thickness which is less so when the beam is experiencing only trans, uh, flexure and shear and if the depth is more than 750 mm we need to provide side phase reinforcement and the area of side phase reinforcement is equal to 0.1% of the web area and the maximum spacing is 300 or web thickness whichever is less. If second case if the beam is experiencing flexure shear as well as torsion and if the depth is more than 450 mm then we should go for providing the side phase reinforcement. So please take care of the difference that is if there is a normal beam and the depth is greater than 750 mm we should go for providing torsion side phase reinforcement as longitudinal reinforcement and if the depth of the beam is greater than 450 mm and is experiencing torsion then we need to provide side phase reinforcement as to resist the torsion. So now we will proceed with the a numerical such that these things will be more clear to you. The maximum spacing criteria and all those things will be more clear to you. Okay, That we will discuss in the next class. Hope you are clear with this. Thank you and have a nice day.